all right welcome back to my channel my name is isaac matthew but you can call me matt mega in today's um, um interview i have emily halfley all the way from united states of america so this is um a very young promising young lady who has traveled to 107 countries could you believe that so in today i'll be in today's video i'll be asking her some questions concerning her tours and travel that she has um made for some couple of um weeks or months ago so um hi emily welcome could you please um, briefly describe yourself Hi, my name is Emily. I'm a world traveler and a YouTuber. I've had a YouTube channel for a little over a year now and I've been documenting all of my trips that I've been taking. Um, I'm currently at 106 countries. I'm trying to get to all of the countries in the world. Um, I'm 26 and my country of residence is the United States. Okay, so the next question says, how long have you been a YouTuber and what inspired you joining the community? Uh, my friend Jason actually inspired me to start a YouTube channel um, he has another channel, Jason Piper, on YouTube, and he has actually been to every single country in the world. Um, so we were traveling together on some trips, and he kept saying, hey, you need to start documenting your trips, you need to start documenting, because later on, you're not going to remember all of the things that you did. And eventually I caught on to it, and I thought, okay, yeah, maybe I do need to start documenting my trips, um, so I have some more memories and some videos later on. So that's really what got me started um, in the YouTube community. Uh, it was just knowing other YouTubers and getting connected with other vloggers and travelers. How long did it take you for your channel to get monetized? Uh, my channel actually was monetized pretty early on. I believe the qualifications for getting monetized are to have a thousand subscribers and I believe you have to have 4,000 hours of watch time. Um, what actually got my YouTube channel monetized was a video uh, in Trinidad that I did. So uh, that one video um, got a whole bunch of views. I think it's at about 60,000 views, 60,000 yeah, views right now, which actually isn't that much, especially for a YouTube channel because some people get millions of views on each, each video that they come out with. Um, but that was enough to get my channel monetized. So that's how I got monetized on YouTube. <laughs> Would you mind briefly telling us how much um, YouTube revenue you make from your YouTube channel monthly? Um, how much money do I make from YouTube? So it really varies. Um, it varies on a whole bunch of factors. Sometimes you make a lot of money in one month. Sometimes you make almost nothing in a month. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the advertisements that are being shown on your videos. You know, I spoke with you the other day and you told me about um, how many countries you've traveled to. So what really inspired you? I was really just inspired by curiosity. Um, to be completely honest with you, when I look at a world map, I see some countries that I'm not familiar with. And I think, I wonder what that's like over there. I've never even heard of this place. Um, I'm young, why don't I go explore? Why don't I go see this place? Why, why wouldn't you if you have the opportunity, right? Um, so yeah, it was mostly just curiosity, just wanting to go see a little bit of everything. Um, and I never thought that I would get this far. <laughs> I would go to half of the world, but here I am. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to go to the other half of the world. Maybe I'll make it, maybe I won't, who knows. Um, but I'm certainly gonna try. I have, uh, I have the opportunity to try, so I wanna take it. <laughs> okay, so is there any form of sponsorship from people or you fund your travels? Um, I fund all of my own travels. Unfortunately, I would love it if somebody else would fund my travels for me, but that's just not the case. So I don't have a trust fund. I don't have uh, wealthy parents or any anybody like that who's helping me travel. So yeah, I'm just paying for it all by myself. Um, luckily, it's not that expensive to travel. It sounds um, it sounds funny saying that, but you can if, if you really want to travel or you really want to go somewhere, you can definitely plan ahead of time. Um, get more affordable options, get an affordable hotel, get an affordable rental car, you know, plan your ticket ahead of time to get a cheaper plane ticket, whatever the case may be. Um, one of the great ways to save money, especially when traveling, is to look at a, a place on a map, say, okay, I want to go here. I want to go to, um, I don't know, I want to go to South Africa, right? Go to those neighboring countries while you're there. So don't fly back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and don't do that. Just stay there for three, four, five months and then just go to the neighboring countries around there and, and really enjoy the trip. Um, that way you're not stressed for time. You get all of the trips at a cheaper rate, right? Because flight from South Africa to, I don't know, Lesotho, 
um, is a lot cheaper than flying all the way back to the United States and then going back and forth. So um, yeah, that's a, a great way to save money while traveling. But um, yeah, it hasn't been overly expensive to be completely honest with you. Um, and yeah, I, I pay for all of it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm carrying the cost of, of all my traveling expenses. <laughs> what was your best moment during your travels and tours? Like your best moment? It's been a little bit of everything. I mean, it's been so joyous. I've had so much fun in so many of the amazing places that I've been to. Um, it's also been super challenging. Sometimes you run into challenges that you weren't expecting. <laughs> and I have certainly um, run into those cases. Sometimes you get into a country and you realize that it's not so easy to leave. Um, I remember being in um, Madolva. I was in Chisnia, Madolva, and I remember trying to get to over to the Ukraine. Well, I ran into some problems. One, because of the langu language barrier. Um, <laughs> I don't speak Russian, I don't speak Ukrainian, I don't speak Moldovan. Um, so it was very challenging because almost nobody over there speaks English or Spanish. I know a little bit of Spanish. Um, but I, I quickly realized that there were no trains in the country. I realized that they didn't have a rental car that I could just go get and drive out of the country. Um, and then I tried to book plane tickets and I, I learned that if the plane isn't full, they won't leave. <laughs> so um, your plane ends up getting canceled. Your flight ends up getting canceled again and again and again. And then finally, when the plane is full, then you can leave. That's nice. That's very beautiful. So have you been to any um, African countries before? Um, so I think I've been to about five African countries. I've been to Ghana. Um, I've been to Ethiopia. Um, Ethiopia, I want to go back to. I didn't spend enough time in Ethiopia, so I have to. I have to get back there and um, go go see some more things. There's a lot to see in Ethiopia, so um, I need to make a second trip for that. Um, I've been to uh, Lesotho. I've been to South Africa, and I've been to Swaziland or Eswatini. Um, so yeah, I've I've had so much fun in the African countries that I've been to so far. There's so much of Africa to go see. Um, so I'm not even. I haven't even reach the tip of the iceberg in getting through Africa. Um, it's a little bit challenging for United States citizens because we do need visas in basically every country in Africa, except for maybe a handful. Um, so every single place that you go to, especially in West Africa, there's so many tiny countries that you can kind of knock out quickly, but you need a, a different visa for every single one. So some of the visas are on arrival. Um, some of them you have to apply ahead of time for. Algeria is a really difficult one for us to get. Um, so I, I'm planning to go do an interview in DC to get my Algerian visa. Um, but there's so many places that I'm so excited to go see in Africa. Um, Rwanda is really high on my list. I wanna go to the Draft Manor in Nairobi. Um, Victoria Falls, I'm so excited for. The Seychelles, I am so excited for. I cannot wait. Um, Madagascar is one of the places I really wanna go see. There's so much of Madagascar that still hasn't been explored. Um, yeah, there's so much on my list for Africa. So I'm, I'm really, really excited for Africa. Um, I think the next country that I might visit is gonna be, I think it's gonna be Morocco, but I'm not sure yet. Um, but I might end up in Morocco as my next African country. Um, and I might work, work my way down. That's what I'm thinking I might do, but I, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so excited for Africa, I can't wait. So what do you want to achieve in the, um in few years from now? Like, what do you want to achieve in few years from now? I'm hoping that I'll get to every country in the world. That's a really big if. I have 90 more to do. So if I went to every country in the world, I'd have about maybe a week for every country if I um, did 90 in the next two years. Um, so that's a really big if. I don't know if I'm gonna get through the, the rest of the 90 in the next two years, but if I did, that would be amazing. Um, but that is one, one of my goals. Another goal that I have is I want to start um, businesses in different countries. So um, some people might not be familiar with this, but you can apply to get a passport or citizenship in other countries if you um, make a business in the country and you employ a number of people. Um, one of those places, for example, is the Philippines. If you, um, I believe, you'd have to double check me on this because I, I don't remember every single um, legality, but you can apply for citizenship and a Filipino passport if you have a business in the Philippines um, for two years and you employ, I believe, four people for at least two years. Um, so that's something that's really high on my to-do list because it's it's great because you're employing people in those countries. 
um, but also you can get another passport, which would be really, really cool. Um, I have a couple friends with multiple passports and that's one of the one of the main strategies they've actually used in getting to so many different countries. Um, for example, if you're a US citizen, you can't go to North Korea at all right now. Even if you get on a tour, you start in China, you get on a, um, one of the tours that's conducted by the North Korean government, we cannot go to North Korea at all. Um, so in order to get to North Korea, if you are a US citizen, you would need a different passport. You would need a passport from another country. So um, yeah, starting um, a couple businesses in another couple other countries would, would be something really high on my list that I'd like to do. Yeah, you know, the other day I was asking you, say, who exactly inspires you the most? Gosh, who inspires me the most? Um, that's a hard one. Um, probably, I had probably just a lot of my family members. Um, they probably inspire me the most. I, I have some um, family members, especially like my my great great grandparents were um, some of the first settlers out west in the United States. Um, so they made these really really kind of long, challenging journeys on wagons and horses. <laughs> to get from one side of the United States to the other um, to settle there. And I just, when I think about their journeys that they went through and how much um, how much work it was to get to their, their home or their, their place where they eventually um, went to, I just, I can't imagine the challenges that they went through. So um, that's something really inspiring for me because when I'm having challenges, I think about what they went through and I think, well, it's it's nothing compared to that you know you, you couldn't even imagine um the things that some of your ancestors went through before electricity um before all of our modern day conveniences um they just had they had challenging lives so um yeah that's something that really inspires me to to keep going um just knowing that it could get worse <laughs> right um it's it's it can always get worse so um i can never never complain about anything uh really there's there's no complaining because uh you know somebody somewhere had a, a more challenging time going through this the same journey or you know going through the same thing that that you're going through at the time um so yeah i'd have to say probably my you know my grandparents my great-grandparents are probably my biggest, biggest inspiration um hearing some of the stories that they went through um and, and seeing you know seeing the challenges that they overcame is um is pretty inspirational to me okay so when do you intend traveling to the rest of the countries on your list i think my next uh, my next journey or my next country is going to be the dominican republic i'm going to uh head over to the dr probably in the next couple weeks um so it's it's going to be soon my passport is full right now so i'm waiting to get another passport in the mail um, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna leave in the next couple weeks and continue. Um, I don't wanna spend too much time at home. I don't wanna spend too much time waiting around. Um, so usually I'm, I'm usually traveling 90% of the time, <laughs> which can get tiresome. But um, yeah, it's probably, probably in the next two weeks I'll start on Dominican Republic. I'll head over to Cuba and get to Venezuela. Venezuela is another hard one for the United States. So um, I'm gonna head down to Mexico City, get my visa, and then I'll head directly over to Venezuela. So what's um, just a candid advice for people planning on starting what you've been doing, like traveling to different countries. You said you've traveled to 107 countries. So what is your candid advi advice to those people that, that want to, that still wants to go into this um, aspect of traveling and, and tours. Best advice that I could probably give is to eat the elephant one bite at a time. So it's it's a really big challenge, um, especially if, if you're one of the people who's trying to get to every single country in the world. I'm not there yet, right? So I can't really give advice on every country. Um, but um, if you're yeah, if you're trying to um, take a lot of time out of your life and take a lot of money out of your life and um, go and, and do this. Um, you have to eat the elephant one bite at a time. And what, what I mean by that is don't think about, when I think about Africa, I don't think about going to every country. I just go, oh, I'm gonna go to this one little country. And then I'm gonna go to this little country. And I'm gonna go to this little country. And just little tiny, tiny little steps. Um, so you don't get overwhelmed because <laughs> it's so easy to get overwhelmed um, with things like this. So uh, yeah, I just just one little step at a time and you'll get there before you know it. You'll turn around and go, whoa, I didn't I didn't even notice that I went to 100 countries. I didn't even know um, that that happened because, you know, you're just along for the journey and you're you're um, you're just kind of enjoying every step of it. So, yeah, slow and steady and just uh, just go really slow and enjoy your time. Um, don't rush. There's nothing to rush over. Um, so yeah, I would just, you know, just go, go slow um, and just make sure that every, every single day is a good day. 
Um, that's what I always try to try to do in my mind is I think, well, at the end of the day, when I lay down and I go to bed, I want to have a good night's sleep. I don't want to, I don't want to be up and awake. So I want to do as much as I can during the day, get really, really tired from trying my best every single day and then go to bed. Um, so that's what I always tell myself every single day. Um, but yeah, just want eat the elephant one bite at a time. So it looks big at first, but little tiny tiny bites and little tiny steps and you'll you'll get there i want to um, really appreciate you for at least making out time for this wonderful interview it has been an absolute pleasure and i hope your viewers and my viewers enjoy um and yeah i, I hope um i hope your channel and everything that you're doing is um is just going uh fantastically and we get to stay in touch for the future thanks thank you guys for watching this video and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification icon for new notification anytime we put up a new video my name still remains matsmega i will see you in my next video peace out